registered for this. And we are recording this meeting. That's a little message again. And uh, we can send you all the resources and links to everything that I've talked about here at the end of the program so you don't have to like take notes or anything like that. We're just going to go through this and um, then we can send you that. You can request it in the chat box. Give us your email and we'll send that to you. So let's get started. Um, there are a lot of hidden gems around the basin and we're going to talk about quite a few of them and we're going to skip over a lot of them too. We may end up having a part two. So I can't move the there we go. So happy Earth Week to everybody. We had Earth Day on Monday, and uh, DARPA, we celebrate Earth Week just about every day, obviously. And we're celebrating it this entire week. So I just wanted to let you guys know, if you weren't aware, that in 1962, Rachel Karchin's book, Silent Spring, really exposed the pesticide problem with DDT. And she eloquently questioned humanity's faith in technology and progress, and it helped set the stage for the environmental movement. But then in 1969, the Cuyahoga River actually caught on fire uh, due to the industrial pollution. It was really crazy and scary. And the Cuyahoga fire was actually kind of the final atrocity that propelled the nation into action and paved the way for the first Earth Day in 1970. It also inspired the creation of the EPA. So pretty, pretty neat stuff there. We're lucky to um, not have a lot of those problems now. However, and uh, 51 years later, we had the same problem in Cahoga, unbelievably. So um, I guess we're still reaping what we sowed, but we are learning all the time and we're constantly trying to improve. But it's a stark reminder of we still got a long way to go. So a little Lorax wisdom for you. And if you don't know the Lorax, it's one of my favorite Dr. Seuss books. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. So if you haven't read that book, go back and read that book. It's great. Real good Earth Day book. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about us, the Dan River Basin Association. Uh, we're a 5013 nonprofit, member-based organization. Our mission is preserving and promoting the Dan River Basin through uh, its cultural natural resources. And we do that through education, stewardship, and recreation. And Anna, I want you to let me know when we're about halfway through, too. I meant to say that. Give me a little heads up because sometimes I run over. Um, our service area is quite large, uh, about 3,300 square miles, six major rivers, all draining into the Dan or into Lake Carr, Bugs Island Lake. And the Dan River Basin is a sub-basin of larger Roanoke River watershed. The dam is 265 miles long, and it begins in Patrick County on uh, Belter Mountain, so does the Smith. It's 45 miles long, and um, the headwaters are over there in Patrick County. We're going to talk a little bit about those places. We also have the Mayo. It starts over there in Patrick County as well, merges with the Dan, conveniently in the town known as Mayo. As Mayo. We also have the Sandy, the Bannister, and the Hyco River. One of these slides don't advance quicker, but... So anyway, there's, there's just really incredible places and sites to be seen across our, our basin uh, and adventures to be had, places to explore. Uh, you just need some simple tools and curiosity is the main one, you know, looking for places, uh, finding out where to go uh, off the beaten path. And for me, it's in a spirit of exploration and it's, um, or just an eye for the gems that other mates overlook. And we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, there's no way I can cover them all, so probably going to have a part two one day. <laughs> but what are the hidden gems? Uh, or at least how am I defining them here? So trails, waterfalls, wildlife, wildflowers, rivers, our historic sites. All of these, to me, are hidden gems. Not just locations, but the places at locations, the things at locations that others may not see. It's really important uh, you know, when you go out and walk to enjoy where you're at. And weather's a big part of that. But also, just being aware and observing. So many times I see people walking down a trail and they're not even looking around at things. And there's hidden gems right under their feet. So that's what I'm going to try to do today is give you, uh, present you some places maybe you've never been before uh, or maybe places you're familiar with, but you didn't realize certain features were there. 
uh, whether it was the uh, best place for a view or uh, waterfall is out of the way, uh, or maybe it's um, some special creatures that I love. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a lot of different places, and then you'll recognize some of these probably. And if you don't, once again, we are going to provide you a list uh, that you can locate all these wonderful places. Uh, hopefully, it'll inspire, inspire you to find some hidden places of your own. Um, you know, I, I, I spent a lot of time just driving around our basin and uh, looking at maps, and gathering as much info as I can and finding places on my own. Uh, but I also have a lot of folks around me, especially DARPA folks, that have told me about great places. And when they do, I go and find them. So this is a great source of information. DARPA is a great place for that. There's a lot of people, uh, members of DARPA, that know everything about our basin, and it's fantastic. Uh, this, of course, is the iconic overlook at Lover's Leap in Patrick County, and a uh, wonderful place to visit. We always take people right up there when they're coming to visit our location because it is so beautiful. It's off Highway 58, and obviously it's under construction right now, but you can still stop and see Lover's Leap up there. And then uh, over over there in our east of, east of our uh, basin there, we have the Stanton River State Park, which is pretty cool. Um, all the way over in Halifax County and Pearson County in North Carolina, and then back over to Patrick County and Stokes County, where the, we have the Smith and the Dan Rivers. This is White Falls and the Smith River in Patrick County. So really, all you have to do is follow the water, in my opinion. Uh, waterways wind down from the mountains. They travel between states, and they make their way toward the sea. And, you know, many of our recreational assets are tied to our water. But that doesn't mean you have to be a boater or a fisherman plenty of trails, cultural sites along these uh, corridors, and that's where we're going to search for all our hidden gems. And obviously, if you haven't seen this view at Philpott Lake, you definitely need to go there. And there's some great resources out there. Uh, good old internet, that's what I like to say. Uh, there's more resources than we've ever had before, 20, even 10 years ago. The explosion of social media uh, sites, including Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, it's open a world of adventure for people, or a Pandora's box, however you want to look at it, to outdoor enthusiasts. It's good and bad, uh, but the key to locating what you want is to research it and combine it with your maps and combine it with your own knowledge. Google Earth, other, other great apps like River Gauges, Weather, you have a whole kit to finding new places and hidden gems. So here's a cool app called Trail Link. I love this one. It's pretty easy. It's got a lot of the um, rails and trail maps on it. There's one called Trail Forks that's got a lot of mountain bike trails on it, but it's also useful for hiking trails. And another one's called All Trails. That's a fantastic one. Uh, you can find trails in your area, locate trails just about anywhere you're at. There's a, so much information out there now, and people are constantly putting this stuff online. So it's easier than ever to find these apps and find these locations. Why is my screen not moving? Sorry, having a little issues here. Um, there we go. So there's uh, some places I want to start with that are just kind of, uh, that you might not think about. Uh, instead of making you hunt for all the cool spots, I'm gonna kind of give you a, a broad view of places that you might be able to find stuff. And when I'm talking about it in this slide, Particularly, we have these in Virginia, North Carolina, all across the country, are state-managed game lands, wildlife management areas. You can look them up on the State Division of Wildlife Resources, Department of Recreation sites, lands are, you know, they're mostly thought of as hunting and fishing, but they're not just for sportsmen. Uh, they're state lands, they're your lands, you need to utilize them, get out there, safely, of course, check your hunting season regulations, but it's, a, it's an untapped resource for a lot of us. So I encourage you to look for those state lands. Sorry, I can't move this slides fast enough. They just kind of sit there. Just here's an example of White Oak Mountain in uh, Virginia. That's the type of stuff you can find on the website. Lots of information there. Here's one for Caswell County game lands, maps, all kinds of information on there. These are places that, like, I haven't been to, I've been to White Oak, but I haven't been to Caswell County game lands. I'm looking forward to exploring that. So there's a lot of neat 
things out there and resources. We don't just have to think about particularly hiking trails or paddle trails because there's other lands out there that, that need to be explored. Uh, there's also some great, more great online resources and, and finding cool things for me. I use a lot of tools and I mentioned hidden gems are not only places, but they're flora and fauna that you're likely to find. And if you want to know what kind of plants, what kind of animals are in a, in a place, uh, iNaturals is one of the best things that you can get and download. Uh, there wasn't a lot of information on there many years ago, but now there is a ton of information on there. And you can make your own observations and IDs, or you can find other people's. These are just some of my observations over the years. I've used it for several years now, and it's um, sometimes I just go and look for observations in the area I'm, I'm at. And here's what's really cool. There's a map of a world map of observations, all that red. Everything's covered up by observations now. It didn't used to be like that, but it's absolutely incredible. And you can zoom in. This is pretty much the Dan River Basin reason. Every, every single one of those pins represent an observation, whether it's a plant or an animal or an insect. And you can zoom in even further on that. And this particular shot is just the Martinsville area, and that's just one observer, that's one person. So you can zoom it down to one person or one particular species, which is really pretty cool. Uh, this is my favorite little iNaturalist story. I was in the Sand Hills in North, uh, South Carolina on my way back traveling from Georgia, and I'd seen water moccasins there about 30 years ago, and I really wanted to see them again. Uh, so I went there one day, I didn't have much time. I'm driving around all the ponds, looking all over the place for these water moccasins Cotton, northern cotton mouse, they call them. Couldn't find them. It's the far west part of their range. And I get on I naturalist and bam, there's one somewhere close to the location I'm at. I search around and I look over the spillway and sure enough, there's a water moxin laying there. It happens to be the exact water moxin that was photographed on iNaturalist. So here's the here's there's the original one that I found where I was, and then there's my photo of the same snake. It was like several months later. So a very useful tool. Obviously, you don't want to use it, but, you know, really endangered species and habitats, you may not want to put exactly where you find stuff. But when you do, I was really grateful for having that. So, a uh, wonderful little tool. All right. So, uh, I'm going to start over here in Halifax County. Uh, let me check my time there. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Um, Halifax is the far eastern edge of our county, or our footprint our 3,300 square miles, and it's over on the east and in Virginia. And below that is Pearson and Caswell County. But Halifax is uh, an awesome place. If you haven't been there since my main office is in the Henry County Administration Building, I do not get over there as often as I'd like, but it is a fascinating place. There's tons of history over there. It's a, it's a really inviting town. It's home to one of our longtime Darwin board members, Carl Espy. And for me, the hidden gem about Halifax is really the Bannister River, but there are plenty of other natural and cultural resources and cool things over there to observe. And the town of South Boston is cool. It's got the prisery, it's got historic buildings, and of course, the bridge over the dam and this, the crossing of the dam is a famous site there, a uh, Revolutionary War site. There's a memorial down there. It's not that difficult to find, but if you haven't been, it's, it's a hidden gem. Any of these places that you have not been to, in my opinion, every time I find a new place, it's a hidden gem to me. So yeah, this is the memorial to the site of the crossing of the dam, give you a lot of information about what happened during the Revolutionary War. I'll let, that, I'll let you explore that site yourself and find out. And then, of course, you have a section of the famous Tobacco Heritage Trail. A lot of people have been on this. I've not been on the whole thing, but I have been on this section in South Boston. And it's, you know, it's pretty common. Everybody knows where it is. It's a just a paved rail trail. It's great, but there's a lot of hidden gems along this trail, and I love it. It's great for walking, biking. Uh, there's even horseback riding out there, and it, this section's 2.6 2 miles paved out back, so you can get up five miles on it. So some of the neat hidden gems to me along this trail are there's an old sluice gate down there uh, that drains to the river. There's a pond there. They call it the duck pond, I think. It's a huge pond, and if you look real close, there's this giant beaver dam or beaver lodge out in the middle of it. People walk by and never even notice it, but if you stand there and take a look and look out there, you'll see that. Lots of birding in there. Uh, it's a, it's just a fantastic site. 
Another cool thing is the Diamond Hill Cemetery, which is an old slave cemetery. Uh, it's it's neat that in the fact that you can still access this off the trail, it's just a little side trail up the Berry Hill Plantation, and um, you can walk around there. It's it can be quite sobering just to look at these uh, gravestones, and most of them are just rocks. There's there's not a lot of headstones in there, so it's a great little piece of history. If you go a little further down the trail, you'll get to the Berry Hill Plantation ruins. And I thought this may have been uh, closed off, but Carl Espy informs me that the Berry Hill people are allowing people to, to walk around the ruins. Just be careful. You can see there the latest photo. They've got them propped up, so you don't want to uh, climb on top of these ruins. They're, they're nice enough to let us go up there and take a walk around. So it's a, a really neat site. And Berry Hill Plantation is a great place that you can, you can visit, too. Uh, but they've, they've got a lot of trails there uh, themselves. Uh, let's see. Also, a neat thing about this trail, now I've not seen all these birds, but I have seen the orchard oreo out there, but there's blue grosbeak, summer tanager, there's eagles, there's osprey. Those are all hidden gems that, you know, when you're just walking around and you're out there for some exercise, you may not notice, but a lot of birders do go out to this trail because it has such a wide variety of habitat to see. Uh, I found my own hidden gem last time we were out there. Patty walked real crazy about it. It's a little northern water snake up there by the pond. I thought it was kind of cool. The Bannister River in Halifax County, I think, is a real hidden gem. There's not a lot of great accesses on there. Um, there's not enough accesses, but we're working on there. You can you can put in at Kings Bridge up by Bannister Lake and go down to Terry's Bridge. You can go on down to Wolf Trap Road. Uh, it's really easy paddling. There's some great fishing, and it's you're not going to see a whole lot of whole lot of people on the Bannister River. I'll tell you, it's uh it's gorgeous and an underused resource. And Carl Espy and myself, we've been working on different ways to get more accesses there, uh, because if you don't have access and you don't know where to go, it's really tough. But that kind of uh, sometimes protects places, and sometimes you can't protect them because you need to expose people to these places to see how cool they are. All right, if we drop down below the border to Caswell County, there's a lot of neat history here in Caswell County. Uh, I've not spent a whole lot of time there, but I've spent enough time there to know that there's a lot of neat history and there's some hidden gems there. This little place is called Shangri-La. If you've ever driven on Highway 86 through Prospect Hill, you've probably seen this. Some people call it White Rock Village. It's uh, some guy named Henry Warren. I think he was the back of farmer. He made this little miniature village. You can get out and walk around it. It's pretty neat. I mean, it's just it's just fascinating to stop and look at the the effort that was put into this little village. It's kind of cool. Uh, there's a couple of lakes down there, Ico Lake, Farmer's Lake. Uh, I've been by both of these. I've taken photographs of both of these, and I've seen them, but I have not fished or paddled on either one of these. I look forward to uh, exploring these a little bit more. The Arboretum is right there in Caswell, uh, the town of Yanceyville, close to the courthouse. Uh, it's, I have not been there in a while, so I don't know the current state of it, but somebody needs to go there and tell me what it looks like now. It's to, uh, you know, promote trees and native wildlife habitat, butterfly gardens, all that kind of stuff. There's uh, a lot of animals that visit that area and a lot of neat plants. So I'm hoping that it's still there. It's been many years since I've been down there and seen it. Uh, it was an old quarry or an old dump site that they turned into something. So a lot of neat little hidden places around there. If we slide on over to Rockingham County, this place is incredible. I mean, it's full of recreational opportunities. There's, uh, okay, doing good. <laughs> there's, there's so many hidden gems in Rockingham County, and uh, Anna is our program coordinator down there, and she can tell you probably more places than I can. But we're a strong partner with the uh, tourism division down there. And our main office has been lo located in North Carolina, right there on the Smith River. And we're really working hard to promote the rivers and trails in that area. We've got the Dan River State Trail program going on right now. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating place. It's got a little bit of everything. There's a really cool hidden gem right behind our office in Governor Moorhead Park. Uh, that's the sluice way up there to the old canal that ran behind the building and runs from Spray Dam all the way back down to river and the sluice gate is open a little bit. It creates this kind of cool waterfall. There's a little creek running through the park. It's a real small park, a little short trail, but you can drive by 
and never notice this thing. So I consider that a hidden gem. If you go on down over to Lake Reedsville, this is also a very neat place. It's got a little bit of everything, camping, mountain biking trails. And like I said, many of you have probably been to these places, but I want you to just think about the other assets that are there. If you went down to Lake Reedsville, where I'm going this weekend for, to do some camping, we've also built two and a half miles of trail around there. And if you walk a little bit further out with more people, you're going to find really cool things like a big, huge field full of milkweed and thistle. And it's just a fantastic place for wildlife. It's it's a it's a great trail. Uh, you should you should go down there and check it out. So just just walk a little bit further than most people, and you'll find boardwalks. You'll find beautiful creeks down there, and it'll surprise you. A lot of people just pull up into a parking lot and they see a boat ramp or they see a camping area, and that's as far as they, as they go. So the trick to finding these places is is push yourself out past your boundaries a little bit. Uh, the Chickapin Trail is in uh, Rockingham County as well. A lot of people have been there, but I've only been there a couple of times. I just helped design some signs for the place. I thought it was very fascinating to see these old structures, and it is a beautiful walking trail. There's pond down there, river down there. It's like it's just uh, it's like being away from everything else when you get down there. It's a it's a fascinating trail. I highly recommend it. Night Brown Nature Preserve, if you don't know where that one is, that's also in Rockingham County, and it's over toward Belize Lake. Uh, this is Piedmont Land Conservancy property, and it's got a great trail, a really neat creek, a lot of neat stuff on Night Brown. Not too far away from that is our newest park that Otto worked on. It's called Hogan's Creek Park. That is uh, some Duke property. I think it's about 100 acres plus. Uh, we've got a little hiking trail on there. There's some really neat rocks. Uh, it goes all the way down to Hogan's Creek. I encourage you guys to visit that. There is now a restroom facility and a parking lot there. And we've got some interpretive signs, a sound garden, and just a really cool little trail. My favorite hidden gems that I found at Hogan's Creek Park are these guys. These are uh, marble salamanders. And I happen to be doing a little cleanup there. Picked up a piece of plastic and found two of these guys in the same one. You don't normally see these guys out and about unless it's March or February. They're uh, out in the breeding pools, and it's uh, raining and cold in the middle of the night. But uh, they are a hidden gem right under your feet and right in the Hogan's Creek Park. If you go on down uh, a little bit further below Lake Reedsville, you will get to the Hall River. And another one of our parks that we helped work on in conjunction with the MARC, the Museum of Archives in Rockingham County, is High Rock Trail at Hall River. And this is a really neat place. Uh, Definitely go down there if you have it. It's easy access. Uh, there's a little trail there. The, the river's beautiful there. There's an old mill site there. And this also was a really cool Revolutionary War site. So we have some interpretive signs along the river there that talks about what, what it was used for back in Revolutionary days. And this place has been a mill site for as long as we can remember. So High Rock, High Rock Ford, it's a really, really neat site. And you can paddle down, down the river too. Uh, all, and the Hall River Trail is, is an awesome trail. It goes outside of our basin, but it's really neat. All right, so if we go to the other end of Rockingham County up there in the northwest corner, we come to the Mayo River, and the Mayo River is one of those places that also has just about everything. Uh, you can, you know, you can hike along the Mayo River. It's uh, the Mayo River State Park is in North Carolina, and we also have a Mayo River State Park in Virginia, they're contiguous. Uh, they combine the two. You've got a by state park there that touches both both pieces of property. Uh, the North and South Mayo combine uh, in North Carolina to make the Mayo River. There's some really nice uh, paddling on this river. Class three rapids down there at the Bowling Hole, and it's really easily accessed from Old Anglerville Loop Road. You can hike up to Shago Mill, or you can go to the Shago Mill Trail and hike up to Bird's Ledge, which is in this photo here, which is the dividing line between North and South Carolina. It's pretty cool. You can um, paddle from one state to the next. You can hike from one state to the next. The Mayo River State Park is our newest addition to the state park system in Virginia. They're still working on the master plan, so it's not officially opened as a state park, but you can go out there and hike. 
it's at the end of Pratt Road. You can hike all the way down to the confluence of the North and South Mayo and all the way up to Bird's Ledge. It's a really beautiful park. There's some hidden stuff in there, too. These are creeks from the Mayo River State Park, and here's a beautiful beaver lodge right down next to the river that you got to get off the beaten path a little bit to find these places, but they're there. Uh, if you go back over to Pennsylvania County, I found this is a very neat, uh, the Ringgold Trail. Part of this is closed right now due to hurricane issues, but I, the first time I hiked this thing was just a few months ago, and I'd known about it, but I'd never really hiked it or biked it. And it's what it is, it's the old Richmond and Danville Rail Trail, and it follows the railroad, uh, but it's also known as the Ringgold Trail today because it's in Ringgold. And it was really an important transportation corridor in the Civil War. It's like five and a half miles long. Uh, it was opened in January 2001. And it goes through farmlands and, you know, fields and things like that. But the, the hidden gem on this is this really old bridge. And this is one of the hurricane damaged places along the trail. Uh, so you don't want to be walking across this bridge now. It actually is close to going across. But you can walk up to it, check out both sides. And that's the Sandy River. All right, so let's uh, run over to Virginia and the corner of our, the, the northwest corner of our basement up there in Franklin County. We, we cut just part of Franklin County, but there's a new preserve up there and it's called the Ball Nam Natural Area. And this is, um, it's not officially open to the public yet. They do have some guided hikes there. Uh, I've talked to the preserve manager. And they are supposed to be working on some trails and getting that open to the public soon. I got some permission to hike up there. I'd, I'd hiked up to this place years ago before it was ever a natural preserve. Uh, we lived up near Smith Mountain Lake. And I found this place. I kept seeing this place in Rocky Mountain. Going, what is that? That must be the Rocky Mountain of Rocky Mountain. And there's places that you can get up there uh, from the high school. And there's People have been going up here for years, but what's really neat about this place is now that DCR has purchased it uh, through some funding from the Soil and Water and the Land and Water Conservation Fund, it's going to be protected. And there is some rare habitat up there, which is really neat. It was established in 2016, and the National Heritage Program scientists who have been working there for many years, they noticed this uh, plant there, and it's called the Piedmont Thane Flower. And it's only been documented in a handful of sites in the world, and it is at this location. Um, it's a beautiful little flower. There it is right there at the location. This is one of the reasons this area is being preserved. Uh, there is a pull-off on the side of the road there, and the sign that tells you what this land is. And then that's just a view from the top of it. So stay tuned. You can find this information on the DCR, uh, the DWR or the DCR website. Department of Conservation and Recreation under their preserves. It'll show you all their preserves. Grassy Hill is not too far from here as well, but this one is to me a real hidden gem, and I'm really looking forward to them getting some trails on the ground so we can we can enjoy that and also protect the habitat. Uh, when I went up there, I followed the flagging that they had on the trails already, just because I knew that's where they were going to put down trails and didn't want to you know be stepping on things that weren't going to that they were trying to protect. So hopefully they'll get that open pretty soon. And once again, there's the uh, thing flower that it's famous for. Um, a little bit further down, south of Franklin County and Henry County, uh, we've got some really great stuff. And of course, I've plowed around uh, Henry County just for a long time. So I've been here about 18 years. So I've spent a lot of time down here. Gravely Nature Preserve is one of uh, our locations. It was one of our first projects with DARPA that I worked on. And it's a 75-acre track, and it is full of wildflowers. We've got trails that run over the top of the ridge all along the river. And if you've never been there, go there. Uh, go there in the spring, look at the trout lilies, the sweet betsies, the grandiflora, the erectums, the columbines, the bluets, everything is there. Uh, this picture in the left corner there is walking fern. Uh, that's a pretty rare plant for this area, and it's down along the trail. Many people walk right past it. You can find it in other places, more mountainous areas. That's the only place it is at Gravely. Of course, beautiful trillions there. Here's a hidden gem that one of our board members, Ellen Jesse, pointed out to me that I'd never seen. This is at Gravely Nature Preserve along the Rhododendron Trail. There's tons of trilliums down there. And she said, 
have you seen that striped trillium? I'm like, no. And I went down there a couple of years ago, and sure enough, there was one striped trillium in all these trilliums. And I went back the next year, it was there again. I haven't been down there this year to check and see if it's there. Hopefully it still is. But to me, that's just, that's one of those things that's so cool that somebody pointed out to me. And Ellen is our wildflower expert and knows just about where all these wildflower places are. And hopefully, maybe one day we'll have to write a book that just talks about where the different wildflowers are. But I thought this was really, really neat. I love seeing these trilliums. I love seeing uh, all the wildflowers. I kind of, my cycle goes of wildflower. First blood roots come out in February and March, and then you have trout lilies and trilliums, and then you have the green and golds, and everything that we have in this region you can uh, determine by the spring and on through the summer what color you're going to see. It's really neat. Um, the Silver Bell Trail is underrated, in my opinion. Uh, this was another project that we worked on, Dara worked on with the city of Marksville. <laughs> and uh, Carrie Zimmer, who has unfortunately passed away now. Uh, myself and her walked through this piece of property years ago and she had some uh, funding and she said, I want to do, I want to build a trail. I said, I've got the perfect place. It connects the YMCA and the museum over to the Uptown Spur Trail and the Dick and Willie. And as we were walking through this property, we found it happened to be April and we found this unusual tree that neither one of us had ever seen before. And it happened to be a silver bell tree, which is pretty rare for this area. And it's a Piedmont tree but you just don't see them in this area in fact the only ones i've ever seen in henry county at least are on the silver bell trail there's like three three bushes uh three trees out there just the other day uh on its only seat said hey the silver bells are there and i'm like man i forgot i gotta go look at them so the photo on the left is from many years ago and the photo on the right was from about a week ago uh going down on the silver bell trail and, and checking them out so if you haven't seen those you only get a small window of opportunity in April to see these guys, but definitely go check them out. Uh, Lower Mount Preserve, also a, a well-known place to a lot of people. Might be a hidden gem to you if you've never been out there. It's up in Bassett, and um, it's it's also one of those places that to me has, has a little bit of everything. Uh, you can hike up on the ridge. We've got a loop trail on there, and there's a, there's a graveyard kind of off the beaten path up there, family graveyard, go see if you can find that. It's pretty neat. And there's just so many wildflowers out there. It's one of the best places to see blood roots and maiden hair fern. There's also banks and banks of trilliums out at this place too. So if you're into wildflowers, the Lower Mountain Preserve is a great place to go. I've seen fox squirrels out there as well, deer, uh, you know, all kinds of reptiles and amphibians. And you can walk along the Smith River if you want to fish. You can access the river for fishing there. Uh, just an incredible little place and underutilized, in my opinion. Uh, Doe Run Trail is a place that's right in the city limits in Martinsville. And if you haven't seen that one, definitely go out there. A lot of people have. We've just completed a project out there, a little scavenger hunt that has signs up that you can shoot a QR code and you can look for the different types of animals and plants that are out there. There's a pond out there. There's a beautiful little creek, a nice little trail lots of wildflowers and the hidden gem out here to me are the amphibians there's some uh, ephemeral pools and there's some breeding wetlands out there and they have some uh, it's a great place for spring peepers land forest frogs and this little guy which is spotted salamander we have a lot of them around here you won't see these guys except in february and early march uh, in the evening in the dark when it's raining and Doe Run is one of the sites that we go out to and monitor and we check because these guys are breeding. They're laying egg masses at that time. So that's about the only time you're ever going to see these guys. Otherwise, they're very fossorial. They live on the ground. And at the same time, you'll see spring peepers and toads and green frogs and all kinds of amphibians utilizing this place, eastern newts. And so it's a neat place. It's kind of out of the way. You might not notice it if you're just walking down the trail. So to me, it's a hidden gem. Phil Pot Lake in Henry County as well. It also is in Franklin County and Patrick County. It's one of the most beautiful places, in my opinion. Go up to the Overlook and take your friends up there. Check this place out. Phil Pot Lake is, has so many hidden gems around it. It's, it's amazing enough just to see this view, but there's really some really cool spots on this lake. One of the newest spots is a trail that's the 
it's called the Philpot Dam uh, Dam View Trail or Overlook Trail. I'm not sure. Uh, the, the rangers up there just recently built it with some money from the Greater Bassett Area Community Group and the Harvest Foundation. And it's right when you get to the parking lot, you'll see it on the right hand side there. And you can walk down and get a, a really nice view of the dam, a view that you've probably never seen before because before you couldn't even access it. So that's a great little trail you should check out. If you've got a boat, uh, we've got a blue way up there. Every single access site has a place that tells you where you can paddle within a 15 minutes or so uh, of the site where you're, where you're located, the access ramp. What's neat is uh, you can paddle to a lot of these places, and it may take you a long time to get to some of these places. You can also take a motorboat if you want to to go there. But one of my favorite places is to go is to go up to Ryan's Branch. That's an access on Philpot Lake. And you, then you start paddling upstream toward the Smith River, where the Smith River comes in. On the left up there is Puppy Creek, and there's this old mill site up there. That's really neat. If you keep going further up uh, toward the Smith River, you're going to see Everson Falls. But this was Everson Mill on, on Puppy Creek. You won't see it just driving around in the motorboat. You've got to go up that creek to find these things. The other hidden gems on Philpot to me are really neat. If you go all the way up to where it becomes the Smith River proper, and you can do this, and you see right there, there's a boat. That's, I've got a four, five horsepower motor on the back of it. And you can get all the way up there and go hunt for this uh, little uh, U.S. Geological Survey benchmark up there. It's pretty neat that you find something like that. You never knew it was up there. Another neat place to me is Calico Rocks. Uh, you can get to that from Run It Back or Ryan's Branch. You can paddle to that. If you're going to paddle to that, Putting it at run it back, run it back is a lot closer. That's a little creek. You have to go around on the back side of the lake. But if you see from this map, there's a lot of neat places on here that you can get to and just keep going up the Smith River, paddling up the Smith River. And Philpot Lake is just it's gorgeous in itself. There's so many little hidden coves on there, so many creeks that come in and you never know what you're gonna find. There's Bowens Creek Falls up there. You can Go all the way to where Fairy Stone Lake drops in there. That's the Fairy Stone Falls. It's every cove has something different. There's all kinds of wildlife out there. I've seen every type of reptile we have around here. Uh, bears, you know, it's great for fishing. Philpot is an amazing access. And don't just go to the normal places. You know, get out there, hike around, paddle, explore the place. Me, I don't need a trail. <laughs> I'll go where there's where there's not trails. I uh, don't mind that as long as it's uh, legal for me to go there and not private property. I don't mind put a little bug spray on and I'm gonna I'm gonna hike and find these places. So uh, let's jump over here to Patrick County. And I love Patrick County. Uh, it's the birthplace of our at least three of our major rivers, the Dan, the Smith and the Mayo. There's so many cool things in Patrick County. This is the gateway to the Blue Ridge Mountain. And this is one of the neat things about our basin. Um, you can go from the east over there to where the Dan River is huge and runs into Lake Carr and the Stump River State Park and just have this amazing Piedmont experience. And then you can just drive an hour to the west and you're in the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's incredible. And there is so much stuff to explore in Patrick County. It really is the gateway to the Blue Ridge. It's also the headwaters, as I mentioned, of the Dan and the Smith River. This, this is the Smith River as it runs through, uh, I think they call that Apple Valley. It's off Lone Ivy Road. It's not that hard to find. Once again, I'll have these resources located. Most of this land up in this valley is private, uh, but it's gorgeous. You can, you can drive up through there and see it, and it's really different than, you know, when you see the Dan and the Smith further down. The headwaters of the Smith is also neat. This is the North Fork of the Smith. This is a place we used to have access to. Unfortunately, we don't now, but currently the 500 acres that we used to have access to has been sold. It's still protected. It's under a conservation easement, so that's some good news, but it is absolutely gorgeous. It looks nothing like the river further downstream. So once again, following these streams and creeks upstream is one of my favorite things to do. I did this as a kid. I would be out all day long hiking up creeks trying to figure out where they came from. And, uh, you know, obviously you, you've got private property issues and things like that. When I was a kid, I didn't have those issues. I just hiked up them. 
but uh, getting permission to go in these places is fantastic. And we're fortunate to have so many great resources, so much water around us, so many places that are protected. Um, this is the Heart Botanical Gardens. Uh, this is a really neat place. You can't access it right now, but due to the construction on Highway 58 and up to Lover's Leap, it's just as back. It's in between Stewart and Lover's Leap, and it's a really a, a hidden place. Not many people go there. It's not an easy hike from the road. You have to hike way up to the top of the ridge and then you go over the ridge. There's some caverns down there. They call them caves. They're not really caves. You can't quite get out of the light zone, but some really neat rock formations. If you hike all the way down in the valley, you'll find this beautiful waterfall. There's an old home place there. I hope that we can have this open back up again once they finish the construction. We have been in talks with Patrick County Tourism about this site and making sure that it gets opened back up to the public. Uh, another place in Patrick County that I absolutely love, another DHART location. I see DHART, there's a family out there that donated a lot of land. This is the I see DHART Memorial Park. It's um, yeah, out in, let me check that. Okay. Check in the chat there. Thanks. But, um, this is a really neat place. We did a project out there with Dan River Basin where we kind of reworked some of the mountain bike trails for the volunteers out there. We remapped the whole thing. We put up new markers, and that was with some money from the Eco Ambassador Council, which has been great. We worked with Patrick County Tourism on this and all the volunteers. And the coolest thing to me, though, I love those trails. I love the mountain bike trails. I hike them out there. I bike out there. There's 16 miles worth of trails. But this is the neatest thing to me. This is Used to be an old pond site there where the deep heart lives, and it is now a bog. And what happens with ponds is once they start filling in and get grown over, they become these boggy areas. Now, eventually, they will grow over and there won't be anything but a creek running through it. Fortunately, this one is still maintained as a, as a bog. And the reason it's maintained as a bog is because there's a federally protected turtle there that lives there. It's called the bog turtle. And this is our. Uh, Smallest North American turtle. Let me see if I can move this. Rose up once again. There we go. The bog has a lot of neat things in it. There's, you know, black rat snakes that crawl around out there, but this is the bog turtle. Uh, it's really neat. It's, uh, like I said, it's federally protected. You can't, can't keep them, can't farm them. Uh, this bog location, I think these bog turtles were discovered in the late 90s there, and fortunately, with working with Patrick County, they decided to protect the area. We just recently did, went out there and did some cleanups at the site, which was great. Took down all the woody trees to keep it a clear bog area. These turtles, if you want to see these guys, there's a boardwalk out there. April and May, that's about it. Uh, they're, they're getting ready to lay eggs, and they'll be up sunny on little tussocks, and they look like clumps of mud. Uh, you don't see them often. When we were out there working, we didn't see a single turtle. Uh, usually there's, I think there's been up to 10 counted in this bog before, um, and they, they do keep track of these. Some of them have radio telemetry things on them, and they have chips in them, and they have notches on their shells. So they're w real well known, uh, but if you want a chance to see them, that's about your only chance of being able to get to see one up. But just knowing them there, knowing that they're there at the hidden gym is enough for me, even if I never see them, it's really cool. Kibler Valley is another outstanding place. I'm trying to watch my time here. Um, it's Kibler Valley is a, a, a beautiful site in the western edge of Patrick County, and it's close to the North Carolina line. The uh, it's got so many neat things. If you have not been up there and just drove down on Kibler Valley Road and all the way to the very end of the powerhouse, you need to go and check it out. That's the Dan River there. It's a beautiful valley. At the end of it is the Pinnacles of Dan, which is our highest place in Patrick County. Uh, Primland Resorts up there, you get to that from a, a different road. But Kibler is full of everything. I mean, you can fish there, you can hike there, you can find wildflowers there, and it's just a, a beautiful, gorgeous place. Uh, let's see. I don't know why. If you want to paddle there, they the powerhouse there. Uh, is owned by Northwood Power. It used to be the city of Danville, but they generate power out of towns in Talbot Lake, and you can paddle, and it makes class three rapids when they're generating. It's really cool. Here's the pinnacles of Dan. Talk about a great hike. Now, this is a, 
this is a this is a really fun hike. Uh, it's there's not a lot of trail once you get up to the top. Let's put it that way. Anna can attest to that. It is uh, that sign is very correct. You go to the powerhouse, you get a permit, you start hiking up the trail, and then eventually you just have to kind of start bushwhacking and looking up and going, oh yeah, it's up there somewhere, and picking your way. When you get to the top, it is gorgeous. Uh, it's part of the old AT, and it was known as the toughest section of the Appalachian Trail. They rerouted this section away from the Pinnacles of Dan, but there's still old trail up there. There's some old AT markers, and it really is a a, a neat place. You just don't find many people that's been to the top of the Pinnacles of Dan. If you don't want to go to the top, you can just keep going past the powerhouse and hike up the river. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And you can follow a trail of pretty good ways uh, up alongside the stream, and then the trail just dead ends. And if you don't want to hike any further, you're either, you're either bushwhacking or just hiking in the river. I've hiked up there almost all the way to the dam, just fishing, hiking through the water. It's fantastic. I mentioned the, the lakes above this. There's Talbot Lake, which is the uppermost lake, and then Towns Lake. Both of these are absolute gems of Patrick County. Uh, you, have, you do have to go and get a permit from the powerhouse to get up there and then wind your way down this scary little road. <laughs> Either one you go to, uh, you have to get a gate code and then drive down to the, to the top of the dams there. And you could put a boat in. Uh, you could put a, the best thing is a canoe or a kayak, to be honest with you, because you can paddle the whole lake. The town's about a mile long. It's great. You can go, you can fish in these lakes. They're, it's just a beautiful beautiful. It's already up to 3,000 feet. It's incredible. Here's the road I mentioned. It's a little bit of scary, kind of a straight drop off to one side. If you're driving down there, just be a little careful. You go to a parking lot, can't hold many cars, but you really don't have to worry about that. Because not many people go up here. If you paddle all the way up to the end of these lakes, you'll be in the Dan River again, and you can catch brook trout, rainbows, uh, brown trout, all the way there. So what, a, what an incredible paddling and fishing experience these lakes offer. This is one of my uh, favorite things up there near the lakes. I'm trying to move a little square around here. Uh, this is called the Great Falls of the Dan. And to me, this is one of my favorite hidden gems. Um, this is a little hard to get to, but I love it. Uh, I was inspired to find this place by that photo, uh, the old black and white photo there, people sitting way up on this rock. And years ago, a friend of mine said, oh, I tried to hike up there. I couldn't find it. I don't, I think it may be under the lakes. I'm not sure it exists. Recently, another gentleman hiked up there, found another waterfall. We decided to take a trip up there, myself, Anna, Will, and Ariana from the museum. We found the waterfall. We found multiple waterfalls up there. A lot. There are people that know about this and they, they hike it, but not that many. Uh, it's a little difficult to get to, as you see here on this map, there's uh, Towns Lake and you're going downstream from the dam and you can see just looking at that topography that it's uh, very difficult to get to. So the way you get to this is you go get the gate code from the Kimber Valley, get a permit, go down there and park at the dam, go down about 700 and something steps until you get to the pipeline. Then you just follow the pipeline. Uh, it's not that difficult. But I've got a little little video here that shows you a little bit about the pipeline. And you can see as we're going down in the valley, there's the river way downstream, way, way down from this pipeline. So just following the pipeline down is not enough. Once you get to where you think the falls are, and I will give you these coordinates, you can, you can go find it yourself. We do this in the wintertime because otherwise you're going to run into some issues. Um, it's full of briars and raspberries and brambles and things like that and basically you're just kind of falling down the hill to get to get to the river once you get there though it's worth it it's absolutely gorgeous down there and there's a couple of waterfalls in close proximity to either uh, to, the, to each other the one on the left is upstream from this one on the right the one on the left is probably 30 feet tall uh, the one on the right is much bigger than it looks in this photograph because we're not real close to it and this, at this particular time that we were there, they were releasing water. They were not running it through the pipeline. They were releasing it through the dam. So we had a lot more water than normally goes down through there. So it's absolutely gorgeous. You catch it when it's uh, less than that. It's also very, very pretty, though. Uh, I wanted to mention a little bit about these hidden gems. 
These are some of the wildflowers you find in the basin. We have dwarf crested iris, the trout lily, trilliums, bluebells, blood roots. Another type of trillium is the uh, wake robin or reckon, and then the sweet betsies, and also the pinkster azaleas. These are, uh, this is the time of year, guys. If you're going to look for wildflowers, go out now. Uh, they start blooming in late February and March. And then by the summertime, all these guys are gone. So <laughs> go out and see these quick. You're going to get them other wildflowers coming in after that, but definitely while you've got the chance, go see these wildflowers. We've got incredible wildlife all across the basin. If you look in the middle of the photograph of these double crested cormorants, this is right in downtown Danville. There's sliders all over the uh, the, the turtles down there or, or pond sliders that sun themselves just like these cormorants do. The point being is you can see, find these hidden gems anywhere. And they see a lot of times people just walk up trails like the river walk or whatever, and they just pass right by these things and don't notice them. But to me, that's what the hidden gems are all about. I mentioned the amphibians and reptiles we have around here, gray tree frogs, spotted salamanders, of course, tons of deer. You guys know that. We've got the monarch butterfly. We even have fox squirrels. Not, don't see these fox squirrels quite as often as I'd like to, but they are here. Check those out. When you see something that you don't recognize, you say, that looks like a squirrel, but it also looks pretty big. That's a fox squirrel. So how can you get involved? You can join the Dan River Basin Association. You can also join us on our first Saturday outings if you don't know where to go. Uh, oftentimes, we will pick places that are out of the way and are hidden gems. And that many times it's places that you might not get a chance to go to other, other times. We have used to have third Saturday outings, and we occasionally do that where we'll go on some private property. We also have what's called the River Legacy Circle. You can join that and visit places that you might not get a chance to go to. But if you're concerned about getting out, and you want to get out with other people. Myself, I like to solo adventure. I let someone know where I'm going to be and what time I expect it back. I always send somebody a map or drop a pen of where I am if I've got cell signal because I don't want to be out there laying there with a broken leg, not being able to get out. But the Darwin First Saturday outings are great because you're with other people that want to find these places and experience these places. So you can look on our website and see when these are. And we have them across the basin from Patrick County to Halifax County, Caswell to Stokes County, Rockingham County. We we have a first Saturday outing in every county of our basin. We hike in the wintertime, we paddle in the summertime, whether it's on the lake or a river. So that's a really good way. And the other thing about this, you're gonna meet other people. They're gonna show you some cool places that you didn't know about. This is where I met some of the first people that showed me some of the coolest things that I've seen in the basin. So go to our first Saturday outing, join DARVA, and get out there and explore with us. I mean, it's just such an incredible basin, and finding these hidden gems is half the fun. I I love being out there. Uh, I love looking for new places. I'm getting close to my time limit here. So, Anna, I don't know if we have anything in the chat there. Is there anything there that uh, that I need to that I can address right now that anybody has a question about. Okay, well, I don't, I don't see anything in the chat right um, now. Brian, but... I have one question real quick. Yes. Um, How can you safely explore a place without causing a safety or environmental impact? You know, we look at news reports all the time of places that are overloved or places that, you know, people don't understand what they're getting into. So what what can we do as people exploring to um, help with our safety impact or environmental impact while we're out exploring these hidden gems? Well, that's fantastic. And it's also a whole other web webinar. But just briefly, uh, know your limits. You know, watch the weather. There's all kinds of weather apps. Get as much information about an area as you can. Like when we did this hike here, we gathered as much information about that place as we could, from topo maps to asking other people about places, also letting people know where you're going. Because if you do have an accident and there's a rescue, and we're involved in this, I'm on rescue teams, and it does create an environmental impact when you have to go out there and search for people or you have to cut down things or go down rivers or bring in helicopters and things like that. So you want to avoid that. But mainly knowing what your skill level is and not getting above it. Also going with someone else. 
uh, having a trip plan where people can know where you're going and uh, and having an out what we call an out time. I'm going to be back by 10 o'clock tonight, but my panic time is one o'clock in the morning. So give me a little leeway to get back before you call out the troops. But also packing in, packing out, leaving no trace, very important. You know, take everything you need with you. Pick up trash that you see and take it out with you if you can, too. And, you know, if you see trails, stay on the trails. If you're if you're in a place that has no trails, you can also find wildlife corridors, deer trails. Now, that also means you may pick up some ticks, so protect yourself from that. But it helps leave no trace. You don't just grab a machete and go whacking through the bushes. You know, you're going to pick your way through this and you're going to learn how to navigate, whether it's going down a river or going through the trails and having the least impact that you can. But primarily be as safe as possible when you're doing this. Get as much information as you can out there. Explore the web, explore maps, uh, get that beta that you need before you go out there. And I think that is all I have. Uh, it, if there's no questions, like once again, we can send you a, a resource list. You can always get on our website, email myself or Anna would be glad to help you out, give you some some of these locations. Everything that I put in here, uh, I showed you a couple of places that were on private property. Those will not be in the uh, resources, but most everything I showed you in here are places that you can access yourself. And if you find places that I have not been to, please let me know. We will have a part two of this eventually because I've missed a whole lot of places that I really want to put in here and just didn't have time to cram it all in here. But I want a resource of that for people that have that exploration spirit and, you know, love our local trails, but also want to find new places. And I want to find them too. So let me know if you've got some secret places, uh, you know, talk to us on Facebook, give, give us a shout on email. And uh, we really appreciate your attention. Once again, this will be uploaded eventually to our YouTube channel as well. Uh, is there any more questions? I think we are out of time. That looks like That's it. Awesome. So, yeah, awesome. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, guys. And you guys have a safe, fun exploration. Mm -hmm. Awesome.